I think families have had enough of the government trying to separate them and pull them apart. And I think people of faith have had enough of their government trying to deny them the most fundamental right that accrues to each of us because of the Lord. Bless you for that. Continue that stirring. Be part of it as you are today. Stay in that fight. We will prevail. The Lord is on our side. You should know that as I look out at this group today who came to see a f unemployed former diplomat <laughs> speak, it is encouraging. It reminds me that the Lord is at work, and during my time, both as CIA director and as Secretary of State, there were lots of hard problems. By the time things got to me, they weren't easy. Uh, persecution of Christians in Nigeria, the challenges in northern Iraq to people of faith, the Muslims who are being held in difficult conditions inside of China, all, all hard problems trying to preserve and protect religious freedom for people around the world, all the while making sure we got it right here at home. But what gave me the courage, someone asked me this morning, like, how'd you do that? Like, how'd you make it through four years? Um, it was the fact that I know that there's something bigger than me, that there was something grander even than this exceptional nation, and that our Judeo-Christian traditions matter. And as I would struggle and ask my team to try and help me figure out how to work our way through these problems, I was always mindful that the Lord was watching over me and over our country and over my boss, President Trump, and he was helping us, guiding us, making sure that so long as we remained faithful, he would grace us with his blessings, and he did. And he continues to bless this great nation. And you being here this morning is enormously encouraging because you were the people, when we talked about America first, you are the people we were thinking of, folks who get up on a Sunday morning, come to church, worship with their fellow parishioners. They fight through a time when our bars were open and our churches were closed. You, you all are amazing patriots and amazing people, and bless you for giving me the chance to be here. I, uh, I tried to live this out every day, and you should know you can go on YouTube and find a few moments that my mother wouldn't be proud of. But for the most part, I tried to live out my Christian faith in my time in service. People would ask, Mike, how can you be the Secretary of State and also be true to your commitment to Jesus Christ? And I always thought it was an odd question because I don't know how one does it without that. I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how one would possibly even contemplate separating these two ideas. My, it is my faith that is my understanding of human dignity. It is the fact that we know that our rights came from our Creator that allowed me to actually execute my duties to our country and to our Constitution. They are deeply intertwined, and I never tried to separate them. You should know the media tried to separate me from them. <laughs> uh, fantastic headlines for someone who is open about his or her faith. You all have lived this, I am sure, in your lives as well. Uh, yeah, the, the New York Times had an article that said, uh, Mike Pompeo Christian Zealot. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, there was another one that said, uh, a Christian Mike Pompeo more dangerous than Vladimir Putin. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. And then the, the best headline of all was uh, Mike Pompeo, God's diplomat. To which my son said, not bad, Dad, not bad. Uh, you, it, but if you read the article, you would realize this was not intended as a compliment. Uh, God's diplomat, an epitaph I think we would all take. I tried to do that while I was serving, uh, and I'm, I'm sure I had mixed success, but there were great moments that reminded me that I'd had at least some opportunity to shine my light in the same way that I pray that you all will shine your light every day. I was traveling in a pretty difficult place. I climbed off an uh, airplane in the dark of the night, and the gentleman who greeted me on the ground placed something in my hand. He shook my hand, but he put something in my hand, and I walked to the car, got in the vehicle, flipped the light on, and in the palm of my hand was a Bible, a small Bible. And inside that, he had written, uh, Mr. Director, I was a CIA director at the time, Mr. Director, you have been a light to me, and you have changed my life. I don't know who he is. Um, I, I only know that at least in that one place, one person was able to make a difference in someone else's life. I pray that we can all continue to do that and we will each do that in our own place. I'll never forget uh, 
I, I had wanted to give this speech. Uh, President Obama had gone to Egypt and given what became known as the apology speech. Some of you will remember this. I, was, I did not like it. <laughs> so I wanted to go back to Cairo and give remarks when I got this incredible opportunity. So I went to Cairo uh, to give a speech, and as I was drafting it in the preparation for the day, uh, the first sentence of the speech that I wrote out was, I am Mike Pompeo, and I'm an evangelical Christian. Speech comes back from the team, crossed out. So I wrote it back in. Uh, crossed out yet a second time, I invited the speech team to come up and we had a conversation. I, I wanted to include that. I wanted to include that because I wanted the leaders in that country, nearly all Muslim leaders, some Coptic Christians, but I wanted every leader to know where I came from, to know how I thought about the world, know how I looked at them, how I viewed them as, as fellow human beings deserving of the dignity that comes from what the Lord gave to each of us. So the good news is I was in charge and I got to use the line. <laughs> and to this day, to this day, I get more comments about that line in that speech than any other words I uttered as a Secretary of State. These compliments come from people of every faith, from Jews, from Christians, from Muslims, who said, Mike, we appreciated your boldness. We appreciated your seriousness. And we appreciate the fact that you were prepared to talk about the fact that you worked to be disciplined in your faith every day. We knew where you came from. It's not that we always agreed to you, with you. It's not that even inside our Abrahamic traditions we all agree on every part of the Bible and the theology that surrounds it. But we knew who you were. Can we all pray that each of us will be able to continue to do that? I pray and hope you will pray for me and for my wife Susan and our family as we move through these next months that we will be able to continue to do that to stand strong in our belief and our understanding of the Lord as our Savior, and the knowledge that whatever works we do, whatever good we are able to achieve, it is only through his grace that we were able to do so. I, uh, I'm in this special place here at Quentin Baptist. Uh, it's pretty neat. You all, you all understand the criticality of the capacity for human beings to be able to worship and practice their faith, and you all live it out by coming here, not just today, you come and support the preschool. You come and support the programs. You, you pray for Jim and Karen that they will continue to lead and grow this community. Thank you for that. It is a blessing to me. We, uh, Pastor Jim talked about this, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. My mission set as your Secretary of State was to create space for religious freedom around the world. That was important to me as a believer, but it was also an important part of our national security. Nations that are freer, that people can practice their faith, or if they choose not to have faith to do that too, are less likely to cause conflict with us here at home. And it means that our young men and women who sign up to be in our military are at less risk that they'll have to do something difficult in a tough place someday. But I was always mindful that as I was working around the world to create religious freedom without a backbone of that here in the United States, without churches, without pastors, without rabbis, without clerks, who were prepared to defend against the enormous power of the United States government and against state governments. They weren't prepared to defend that basic right, that it didn't matter what the 70th Secretary of State did in some far off place. I was always mindful that you, the work that gets done here in the little places, in the small communities where we take chili to the Wednesday night dinner, or we coach the Little League team, or we encourage someone who's struggling or take a meal to someone who needs help. These are the places where our, where our Christian faith is lived out and we should never let the government take that away from us, not ever. I'll close, I'll, I'll, I'll close, I'll close with this thought. Sometimes I will give speeches, we'll talk about foreign policy, and these problems are tough and it's pretty dark. What Vladimir Putin is doing today in Ukraine killing innocent civilians is horrific. What the Chinese Communist Party is doing to its own people, running a massive surveillance state, telling women that they have to have abortions. These, these are tragedies. These are difficult things. They are dark. I spent four years in some really difficult spots. And so I'll talk about them, and my wife will say, Mike, when, when they leave the room, they must surely want to go Papa Xanax. <laughs> uh, that won't happen here today. We'll go pray. And this is what I wanted to share with you. In spite of all the challenges, in spite of all the difficulties, all the things that we spend time trying to make better, 
know that I can feel a stirring in this country. I can see it. I can feel it. I can touch it. I can observe people in America prepared to stand up for things that maybe even two or five or ten years ago they were less prepared to go fight for. I think we may have all thought that we could take a holiday, take a little time away, that we didn't have to go fight for that next generation of liberty and freedom. But today I think that's fundamentally changed. I think parents have had enough of what's taking place in our schools. I think families have had enough of the government trying to separate them and pull them apart. And I think people of faith have had enough of their government trying to deny them the most fundamental right that accrues to each of us because of the Lord. Bless you for that. Continue that stirring. Be part of it as you are today. Stay in that fight. We will prevail. The Lord is on our side. Thank you all very much. What a wonderful uh, time we've had today. And let me end with this. You know, all the problems that we have in our world are almost insurmountable. When you look at them, uh, most of us are really, really worried. Like, how can we possibly get past these major, major issues? And all I can come back to is there's hope. And the hope is that uh, there is a God. Uh, you know, just look around. There has to be a God. Uh, we see the complexities in this world. We see the the, the, the beauty, we see the vastness, and to say there isn't is foolish. So there is a God, uh, then why is there evil? Why is there pain? Why is there suffering? Why are there earthquakes? You know, why do these things happen? Well, I'll tell you this, God created a thing right, and we've messed it up. Don't blame God for the pain and the sorrow that we see around us. Let's blame ourselves, let's blame the devil, there is a devil. Uh, and and th that's bad news because we've messed it up, we've sinned, we've gone against God, we've rebelled. The good news is that he loves us so much that he sent his son, his name is Jesus. He came, he lived a perfect life, he didn't sin one time. He healed people, he raised the dead, he's changed my life, and he can change your life, he can save you. He died on a cross, innocent, perfect. He poured out his blood for your sins and for mine. And they put him into a grave. They put a stone and a Roman guard, but nothing could contain Jesus for he rose again the third day. He's alive and he wants to save you. How do I know that? Because the Bible says that God loved the world in John three sixteen, He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is where most people get it wrong. They think I can earn eternal life. I can earn paradise and nirvana. No, you can't. You have to be given that as a gift. And the fact is that Jesus paid for our sins. And he said, this is, these are Jesus' words, that God, his father, loved the world so much that he gave his son. He gave himself to die for us. And whoever, whosoever, anybody, I can, I can speak to any crowd anywhere in the world. And we've just returned from Israel uh, from Jordan, from Saudi Arabia, and from UAE. And I could, any, anybody that I met, I could look them in the eye and say, God loves you, Jesus died for you. If you'll put your faith in him, you'll be saved. And so that word whosoever includes you as well. Whosoever, what? Believeth in him. You say, well, that's too simple. I have to do my part. No, you can't do anything. You have to put your faith, total faith in him. And when you do that, look what happens. You will not perish. That word, I believe, means eternal damnation in hell. There is such a place. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. I don't want to scare you, except I also don't want to not tell you the truth. Okay, whoever uh, believes in him should not perish, amen, but have everlasting life. It's the greatest news in the world. It's a gift from God, and he wants you just to receive it by faith. If you've never done that, let me encourage you to take this opportunity to put your faith in him right now. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our program on YouTube. We wanna to continue to provide you some great videos on God, the Bible, and how it all connects with our world. It would really help us if you would consider subscribing to the InGrace YouTube channel. We would also like to have you comment. We will try to read and respond to them. And we also need you to hit the notification button and like the InGrace episode that you just saw. 
These ways will help more people hear about in grace and more people hear the gospel of grace.